today what I'd like to do is, is, is take you on a little bit of a journey that uh, has some uh, uh, the way Schneider views the landscape now and that's in collaboration with many folks in this room. I'm going to sprinkle in some, some uh, quotes and some provocation uh, as to where we go. But at the end of the day, uh, what I'd like to do in the next 30 minutes is provide you uh, that oversight. And then the objective would be to get into some thought provocation as to where we see some of the key issues going forward on how the co-location providers differentiate themselves and what some of those business arguments are going forward. So starting off right away with, with a quote, uh, as you're reading it, what, what is clear is that the integration of the service provider has never been more at the forefront of the ecosystem as it's unfolding now. I think in addition to that, what we need to be aware and what we'll speak to is the importance is changing as well. So it's not just a part of the ecosystem, but there will be some business value added by the colo themselves. <clears throat> so last uh, November in Miami, we talked about uh, a bunch of the trends that uh, would be facing the, the service provider world in 2016. I think a year later, what we have is affirmation that these indeed were very significant trends that impact and will continue to impact how we go to market. Uh, the changing face of the buyer, as, as most of you know, it's, it's no longer about cloud compute and cooling. It's more about having a discussion with the end user um, on what some of their business aspirations are, even including the digital experience uh, as well. The mergers and acts continues to be a healthy market. I'm going to combine the IoT, big data, and the edge all into one. I think that'll be fundamentally a, a, a major portion of where we go from here on how the IoT is mandating a change in the architecture and landscape of the entire cloud, uh, regional, and edge data center community. Um, we had a breakout session a year ago, and, and it was entitled, Is the Internet Giant Friend or Foe of the Service Provider? And I think a year later, we can determine that uh, there's a mutual and a, uh, an ad, uh, uh, let me say it differently. It's, it's, it's clear that the service provider is a valued and strategic asset of the internet giant going forward. We'll talk a little bit about that in a little bit. DCIM, Ron is going to get into it deeper, but I think this is a topic where if, if we just pause for a minute, the DCIM since inception, although it has matured and evolved, is the internet of things to the data center world itself. Right? And I think what we'll find going forward is we're going to need to externalize that capability and provide transparency and capability both to our end user of the colo as well as an emerging ecosystem. And then, of course, the flexible data center architecture. It's our fiduciary responsibility to, to manage our CapEx in a world that is a little uncertain from cloud, hybrid, private, et cetera. So we'll talk about that, and I think Rhonda goes into detail as well. So quickly, uh, a year in review. I think from a demand side, it's, it's clear to everyone and visible that the on-site compute continues to go off-prem. Um, we believe from a Schneider perspective, this trend will continue at least through 2020, declining at a rate of about 5% per year. On the other hand, from a supply standpoint, the appetite for compute uh, continues to grow from the cloud perspective. So there will be many uh, applications going forward, many business uh, things that will continue to go to the cloud, such as the Oracle, but there are some headwinds out there as well. So as you read this, the, the key going forward is to truly understand the customer demand profile what it is they're looking to accomplish, how they want to go about accomplishing that. So the why, the what, and the how become very important here. Um, but it's, it's clear that availability and agility become uh, key components going forward. I was in a data center three weekends ago uh, with this company that's a global service provider. 
I was in their most expensive asset in the world. It's their highest revenue producing asset in the world. And I might be one or two uh, off on this, but they had 133 carriers in their data center. Think about why that is important. Think about the application going forward as, in my personal opinion, Internet of Things is just beginning. So, stepping back two or three years, I think some folks in this room, at least me, were in awe of the shovels hitting the ground and the mega data centers going up and truly didn't understand, was this the beginning of the end? Was it over? Was the cloud giant going to dominate? Uh, was it world domination at that point? And I think a few years into this, um, well, let me back up here. And the reason for this was, I'm going to simplify it into three major factors. Three is going to become a common number for me in this presentation. Speed, scale, and cost. I think everyone in the room grasped it. Not going to spend too much time, but speed was obviously a CRM email deployment, mass scale. Um, scale being, along with cost, allowing me to manage my, my, my CapEx and OpEx on a more adjustable finance uh, internal friendly mode. But I think with the Internet of Things, coupled with uh, 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 content, video content, I, I think the cloud giants, they started to run into some headwinds, right? I think the amount of data that they're now having to uh, capture, process, analyze, and then create an action on is incredible. I was talking to, I think, is it Gary Connolly I was talking to last night? He says, Mark, whatever you do, don't get stu t stuck in a conversation around numbers. The numbers on this page, by the way, are dated back to 2013. Last night, David Johnson, from a Life is On perspective, showed you a 50 billion connected objects. I don't know the difference between 50 and 30 connected objects, but just two years ago, we're almost double what we think is going to be connected going forward. From a, a, a Zetabyte standpoint, and again, I don't know what that is or how many zeros, but we're already close to 16 headed to 20. The point being is uh, there's so much room for this marketplace to evolve and the applications that people are not even thinking of today to be created. However, I think in the last year or so, due to some of these headwinds, we're starting to see a decentralized approach, right? Where, where big just wasn't cutting it. So I think you're finding from a Microsoft perspective uh, what they call their cloudlet. They're going to market now in, in, in one to 10 server micro data centers to offset some of the issues that they've encountered. Dropbox has completely taken their toys and gone home into a private cloud, right? And then we're gonna talk a little bit more in detail about uh, what Netflix is doing from an Open Connect standpoint. And we'll use them as an example as a regional data center. So again, the fundamental uh, building blocks, speed, scale, and cost for the hyper is still valid, remains valid, and their go-to-market business model remains valid as well. So whether they're using uh, modularity, uh, large configured operations where they're rolling in a block of racks uh, and servers, to, to reference designs where they have kind of a pre-qualified a definition of performance and then they tweak it based upon the application. Two, why are they building far away? They're going to continue to be built primarily in non-urban areas just due to their appetite for resources. They are a resource hog and will continue that. So the three problems, they were built for three fundamental reasons. They've encountered three fundamental problems. Latency, bandwidth, and governance. I'm going to focus more on the, on the top two uh, for the presentation. I think we have a workshop on governance as well. But from a latency standpoint, just the amount of data, again, I think that the users are requiring a different experience from the collection, the analyzation, and allowing me to do something real time. From a bandwidth standpoint, mostly focused on video, 
uh, the social media uh, platform has completely exploded in the last two years, and I think you're about to see it really take off with some of the technologies that uh, are being acquired uh, as well as developed. So <clears throat> another quote, what's interesting to me about this provocative data point is how big is the internet of things? How big is the edge in two years? And I say that more from a standpoint of right now, I think people to people, people to machine, those are relatively known volumes. But as the internet of things really starts to take off, the machine to machine to me cannot be calculated very accurately today. It's close to infinity. So the solution then is in threes. So from an edge standpoint, from a topography, we need to look at localized devices, right? Localized data centers, and then those localized data centers touching into regional data centers, similar to the presentation that Olivier shared with us last night. So there is the transformation that we clearly see uh, as an ecosystem that delivers uh, the reliability uh, and performance that the cloud provider needs only via the colo, right? And you can work it left to right or you can work it right to left. Talked about uh, sharing an example with Netflix. I think what they've done is they've, they've got a few business problems. Uh, they have some mature markets and they also have some competition coming into their space. And I think in order to uh, manage both uh, the customer experience and manage their, their bottom line, they went to a business model twofold that started to push the data as close to the consumer as possible and then replicate it or duplicate it and then push it out. As opposed to um, sending it that much video content through a pipe, long distance, high cost. So they've improved both the customer experience and they've, they've lessened their cost going forward. So I think <clears throat> then adding to the complexity called analytics, it's no longer just about traditional data collection, but as we start to take and connect and make smart devices, connect the devices and send them in for some type of uh, analytics, we start to create a compute ecosystem that can be managed remotely like never before. And I think a lot of people in this room probably look at this as an asset uh, management foray. But I would, I would argue that the Internet of Things is not just a business enabler but a business driver going forward. This is completely incremental revenue to everyone in this room. We were with a, a large service provider uh, May, June of this year. Uh, they had a press release where they're announcing between now and 2020, 600 million USD incremental revenue due to their offer in the Internet of Things space with their clients, right? So this is not just a change in architecture. This is not just a business enabler. But I believe that this is a business opportunity for everybody in this room. So then in closing, I think uh, the landscape, I've oversimplified it. I think the acceleration to the cloud will continue and be more balanced and coupled with a hybrid cloud portfolio. I think the the ecosystem, the, the interconnection of networks will, be, will have both cloud and non-cloud based assets and the egress and ingress points of where they're in the network be, will be completely determined by the application and the business criticality of that application itself, right? And then I would like to leave the, uh, the folks in this room with, with three things that I think need to be uh, part of the thought process going forward from a service provider standpoint. And the first one would be infrastructure management. 
Again, I think your customers are going to demand and need more visibility into the impact their applications are having inside your system. Two, interconnections. I've talked about that a little bit, giving you some examples of where that's important. And then I think the ability to either perform or facilitate analytics. I think these will be three uh, very uh, deep criteria that your end user will be looking at in your discussions going forward. So with that being said, thank you for your attention. I would like to introduce Rhonda Asserto at this point in time from the 451 group. All right, thank you very much.